Discover how the Word of God can bring a change in your life through the teachings of Bishop Eddie Addy. Bishop Eddie Addy is an assistant to Bishop Daniel Mills and serves as the resident bishop of the Macarius Church. Anointed, energetic, and a practical teacher, the servant of God will inspire you with practical teaching of the Word of God that will refresh you, energize you, and bring healing to your body, soul, and spirit. Now, to the message. Thank you. Welcome back, LP Cherish. Nice. Thank you for your special love for me. I know that you can hear me singing. May he hear you singing. And may you love him afresh. It's beautiful. Clap for Jesus one more time. If there are new believers, new believers come forth quickly. Nobody is here who is a new believer. Nobody. Walk faster, please. Walk faster. Father, may Christ be formed in these lovely people you have given to us to feed, to care for, to tend, to mend, to heal, to carry. Thank you. May they be blessed to serve you, to live for you for the rest of their days. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. This way. While they are gone, lift your hand and just ask God to speak to you today on Resurrection Sunday. The day we remember as his resurrection day. Most anniversaries commemorate the death, even the birth. But never once the resurrection. So this is unique. This is how unique your Savior and my Savior is. He is unique. He is different from all others. Nobody has a day on which the world can celebrate as his day of resurrection. But thank God for our Savior, your Savior, my Savior. He has a day. He was born. He has a day. He was buried. The day he died. He also has a day he rose again from the dead. What a savior. Hallelujah. What a savior. Hallelujah. What a savior. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that an empty grave is there to prove that our savior lives. Thank you, Jesus. Speak in tongues wherever you are. Declare, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. Oh, Maratasia Gadaha. Rimo Kotokua Kaside Akada. Rimahandie Kasule Bahada. Shatua Kasie Kapali Marada. Blessed be God. Father, we thank you for another blessed time to be in your presence. We ask you to speak to our hearts, to help us, to guide us, to lead us, to complete the work you began in our lives today. Open our eyes to behold wondrous things out of your law. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Clap your hands and be seated. 
Yes, today's message is on the resurrection. And I'll be preaching from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. The whole chapter is my outline. So if you want to write notes, you have written it already because, yes. And in this service, I am preaching from the New Living Translation. So let's begin. It's a whole passage. That is... um, Can somebody shut that guy's mouth? All right. Now, we read in Hebrews chapter 12 that um, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, we should um, lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset us and run with patience or perseverance, the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. The Bible says, for consider him who endured such hostilities or contradiction of sinners. As was explained to us on Good Friday, like you get the opposite of every good thing that you are doing for people. Do you see? And um, the Message Bible puts it this way that when you find yourselves flagging in your faith, Flagging means what? Lowering in intensity of your faith. Flagging in zeal. It means that your zeal has come down. Flag in zeal. When you flag somebody down, it means that you have slowed him down. See, when somebody is driving, you flag him down. When you do this, you are flagging him down. It means you are stopping him or slowing him down. <laughs> you are trying to pull him over. When the policeman says this, he's flagging you. It's like he has, you are driving with excitement, enjoyment, happiness. You are even talking to somebody on the phone. You are very excited. And he says, he, he flags you on your journey. He flags you down. It means that he has, he has and sometimes when you see a policeman, flagging you like that, you you just become discouraged. All your joy disappears. (laughs) And then you start asking, why? Did we cross the red light? I mean, have we done something wrong? You start asking questions about whether all is well. (laughs) Hey, I know a brother who was flagged by a policeman. And he told them to be reasonable. (laughs) Be reasonable. (laughs) Who stops or who flags innocent civilians at 12 a.m. crossing red light in a dark place? Be reasonable. Be reasonable. Instead of going to chase armed robbers at 2 a.m., you are flagging innocent civilians who are going home and have crossed the red light. You are flagging them down. It's like, leave us to, to progress on our journey. Why are you flagging me down? Be reasonable. Be reasonable. They almost locked him up. They didn't care whether you are a professor or a specialist of in vitro fertilization. (laughs) You are telling them to be reasonable. What do you mean? And when they discovered that he's also a pastor, they said, ah, he's a pastor. Ah, we have to lock him Pastor, yeah, look at how he's talking, telling us to be chasing him robbers at, this, at 2 a.m. Who, who, who stops innocent civilians? 
crossing red light at 2 a.m. in a dark place. Be, re- be reasonable. Please don't say it anywhere. When you meet a policeman, don't tell him to be reasonable. Before you realize you are at counter back. They've removed your shirt, your trousers, and you are only in your underwear. If there are holes in it, they will find you out. Because sometimes when you are going out, you don't know that you meet anyone. So you are not even wearing pants. <laughs> so if they take away your trousers, you are finished. <laughs> You were just quickly buying something at school junction and returning home. So you didn't wear pants. You just, or boxer shorts. You just wore your trousers and then you were on. Not knowing that a policeman will flag you down. And you will tell him to be reasonable. And he will go and lock you at my age or police counter back. Anyway. So, when you find yourself flagging in your faith like your faith is moving fast and far then something slows you down something waves you to stop or to slow down you see when you find yourself in your faith the bible says go over that story again item by item that long litany of hostility he plowed through he's talking about the passion of the Christ what he experienced in his sufferings he says that will shoot adrenaline into your soul adrenaline too it will pump you up when you are deflated it pumps you up and gives you some buoyancy yes and enthusiasm beautiful and it will be a blessing. So today we are reminding ourselves of his great work done and accomplished at Calvary. And even in the empty tomb to encourage ourselves and inject some adrenaline into our souls. By the end of this service, there will be adrenaline pumping, pumping into your soul energizing you and turning you into a fiery on fire for God child of the living God say amen Amen. say amen again so we read from verse 1 it's a a long passage but it's, it's good it's not always that we have 7 points or 3 points or 5 points sometimes you just read the scriptures just do a few explanations and then you close the service. Because the scriptures can explain themselves. Sometimes even when you are trying to explain, you you even go on to the deep end. The Bible says that some uh, have uh, interpreted the writings of Paul to their own distraction. Because the things are hard to be understood, but people are forcing to understand and give explanation for things that don't have explanation. Because human beings always think that we must explain What is even inexplicable? Because we want to feel that we are in charge. Anyway, happy Resurrection Sunday. So I'm reading from verse 1. Let me now, we can all read. Everybody read louder and uh, loud and disturb your neighbor. Let me now remind you, dear brothers and sisters, of the good news I preached to you before. What is the good news? Uh, he said, you welcomed it then, you still stand firm in it. May you stand strong and firm in this good news. Yeah. Verse 2. It is this good news that saves you if you continue to believe the message I told you. Unless, of course, you believed something that was never true in the first place. I passed on to you what was most important and what had also been passed on to me which is what Christ died for our sins just as the scriptures say, said he was buried he was raised from the dead on the third day just as the scriptures said he was seen by Peter and then by the 12 after that he was seen by more than 500 of his followers at one time 
most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he was seen by James and later by all the apostles. Last of all, as though I had been born at the wrong time, I also saw him. (laughs) So Paul is writing that this gospel that I'm telling you is about Jesus who was crucified and he was buried and then on the third day he rose again according to the scriptures yes and that he appeared to some people some have died some are still alive and then me too as though i was born at the wrong time so he he didn't i was not he didn't appear to me when he was appearing to the other but later on you see i was born at another time born again at another time i also saw him may you see jesus may he be your focus so that adrenaline can pump into you to continue serving him with zeal all the days of your life the next verse verse 9 says let me read for i am the least of all the apostles in fact i'm not even worthy to be called an apostle after the way i persecuted the church do you see some of you from the way you even used to blow christian girls you see you shouldn't be a basenta leader and and some of you should not be pastors or even bishops from the way you used to manifest your your things Some of you ladies, from the number of boys you have slept with, you should never hold a microphone. Because holding a microphone doesn't give a good picture. Yes. If you yourself, when you hold a microphone, it disturbs you. That's what Paul was saying that from how I used to persecute the church, I shouldn't be an apostle. But, and I should not be, he shouldn't have appeared to me. I'm the least. I shouldn't even be called an apostle. You should be humble like that. Some of you are too proud. Because nobody knows the things you have done. You are proud and very some way. But from the things you have done, you, you, you know that you shouldn't be proud. But sometimes because people don't know, you are very strong and if they bring one of your things, you will sober down just now. Or we bring one of your classmates. Hey! This girl there your church? What? Not this girl, they my class. All of us boys have slept with her before. Hey! We are CM say they your choir inside where they sing for the choir inside. What? Wonder shall never end. And then when she sees you, she frowns because you are one of those. And today look at you wearing white. Sitting in the church. When everybody is wearing white, you should be wearing white with black spots. Yeah, like 101 Dalmatians. One spot means one slaying. From the way I persecuted God's people. Some of you, the way you laughed at SU people. You see. And caused trouble and made their lives miserable on campus. Yeah. Yeah. Crefait, giving them names, making, making noise when they are having services, screaming when you are passing by to confuse whoever is leading. Do you see? Look at you now. You say you are leading worship. Like people should walk out. <laughs> the next verse, it says, But whatever I am now, it is all because God poured out his special favor on me and not without results 
For I have worked harder than any of the other apostles. Yet it was not I, but God who was working through me by his grace. By the grace. You see, based on how you have lived, you are supposed to work harder than some of us. Yes. That you are not working hard is, is, is an unfortunate turn of events because you should be working harder than everybody from what you have done in the past. Some of you brothers who had cars and were working at very nice places with money, you always passed by some church and picked one of the church girls to go and blow her. The girl finished worshipping God now because of your car and the air conditioning your car. And some one lunch you give her on Sunday afternoon. She won't go home straight. Now when you are born again, don't come and be stiff in the church. You have to give money. You have to give your time. You have to be strong. You have to work hard. You have to be serious. You have to build cathedrals and community churches about 52. Because of how you are. One for each week of the year. You cause 52 abortions. One cathedral, one abortion. One abortion, one cathedral. You see, <laughs> Paul is explaining that from how I was, I had to work very hard because grace was given. That grace was not in vain or was not without results. The grace was with, there was much result from my salvation. You won't come for rehearsal. You won't dance. Look, let today be the last time if you're a dancer, you don't dance. Or a chorister, you don't sing. Let today be the last time. Dancers who don't dance. Choristers who don't sing. On Sunday morning. We are tired of, we want 100 dancers. We want 300 choristers. In this service, we want 50 Aquaba ladies, airport stars. Ah, ministers of state, you slept with them. Your mate, your own roommate's father, you slept with him. Your roommate's brother, it's like anybody who came to visit your roommate never went. It's like once your roommate is not there, you blow his brother and two brothers, you slept with both of them. Last week, the one who came, you slept with him. This week, the one who has come to you, you have slept with him. And their father also came. He couldn't go free. Now you are born again. You are in a church. Hey! You have had sex more than your grandmother who has 35 children. You must work harder. You have to come to church very early. Yes. To atone, to help. Although Christ has forgiven and atoned for all your sins, you must also work harder to compensate for the opposite that you did in your life. And then when we are doing worship, you can raise your hand. You have raised your hands. You have raised your legs. You have raised your buttocks. You have raised your stomach. You have raised your chest. You have raised your head. You have, you have hung in the air. You have suspended in the ceiling. You have hung in the fan. You are saying you can't hang yourself. You can't hang in the church. Hey! On the floor. In the school canteen. Some of you boys. The school you were in. It had a chapel. There was a pulpit very broad and long in the school. You took girls to sleep behind the pulpit in the church, in the school, in the night. Now you are born again. You say you don't know how to do basenta work. Yes. You should be a missionary. By now, only in Angola. By now, only in Ukraine. By now, oh, they are bombing Ukraine. You are inside. Say, I would like to die for Jesus here. I cannot leave Ukraine until I die for Jesus. 
on some bonnet awaye. Some of you, you and your mates, you went to hide behind the pulpit, the altar in the church, smoking weed in the church, and there was a cross of Jesus crucified. He was on the cross, hung like this, and you were under the cross smoking jama. Ah! Now you are in the church, say so you can't asha, you can't sweep, you can't clean the church, you can't do anything for the Lord. Today is the last day you will ever say, I can't work for Jesus. Small, small, small boys. By a 10, now we ma. By a 13, now you are sleeping with boys to boys, girls to girls. Hey! Today, when we are preaching, now what you are son them, no one in your name, to so be a word deep and coa and chilling him. Yes, that's why some of us are preaching. Oh, okay. when we see what God has done, Jesus gave up his life for us. There's no reason not to scream in the microphone and preach. And said, Paul says, it's, eh, when I see how that he appeared to me, then he called me by his grace and gave me favor. That you two, okay, you are killing people, but okay, now I want you to go and preach for me. He said, hey, instead of killing me, you are sending me for you. Oh! Wait there. That's why when they beat him, he couldn't stop. They stoned him. He couldn't stop. They arrested him. He couldn't stop. They put his leg and hands in stops. He couldn't stop. Because You can never stop. You can never stop. We must change. All of us must change. It's not right. What is happening is not right. But from how you used to be, this is not how you should be serving God. When you are married, yeah, I go go home too much. But Miss Manyanko Pawa Juya, where you were through Bonui, in Chabai now, in Chorda and Nam, Mankesim, Neri preach, Nan and Nam, or down hot baby, a eh, missionary work. I bet Snatchup would do me there, eh, would be out on your bonnetta. Now you win him fine. Now, but points into be a new day. A acrobatic, gymnastic, high jumper, and pole voter. Small boy, your 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 auntie's children, your own cousins that came to your house, you slept with them. Today you are in church. It's like you are some holy person. You don't really make noise. You don't really whatever. But you call names of girls. Then you tell them, call my name. As you are having sex with them, call my name. What is my name? Then they'll be calling your name. Then you are happy. Hey! Today when you are coming to church, you can't bring even one person. By now, because you alone, you have five buses to your name, man. When people ask you that, hey, how come you are so wild? Every day you bring more buses, more buses. Ah, you don't know. You don't know. You don't know what he has done for me. When they are singing, now why your doll doll be? It's like uh, cherish the love of God. It's like what is cherish the love of? Cherishes mercy, cherishes blood. It's like, oh, it's like, no, 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 bushy, 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 bushy. That's why we dance. That's why we roll on the floor. When David recognized what had been done for him and he saw the ark, he said, What? This is where God, the one who took me from the backside of the desert, he lives here. What? He started jumping. His clothes came off. How? Oh, his wife looked at him and said, Ah, Kenpa, now, do, 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 do
She, me shwe hiya shi. Kwe, ole mi. Ole ninja. Kwe, ma huwa to e ma bo biyane. Oh, jeje me, jeje me karono yu o. Kwe, wancha o, 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 be jokba e. You see, because he knows what was done for him. You don't, normally you don't think deeply about what has happened and what God has done. The apostle, when I saw what he has done, this gospel, I'll preach it. This message you think is simple, but I'll preach it. You have believed in it. You are still standing in it. And I'll preach it. Ah! Verse 11. Sit down. So it makes no difference whether I preach or they preach. For we are all, for we all preach the same message you have already believed. The same message. They, they were not shy of this gospel message that you know when we say some of you say the basic the basic way it doesn't really make us see money or any of these type of things. Bring your notes. Bring your notes and bring your, the things that have happened in your life and we see whether you are more blessed. Bring your notes. You who like summer sorting on the wall so that you can prosper by tomorrow. Come. Same message. But tell me this. Since we preach that Christ rose from the dead, why are some of you saying there will be no resurrection of the dead? Or thinking or are not aware that there will be resurrection of the dead? Or it doesn't weigh heavily on you if Christ rose from the dead? That's why today is resurrection day. We are reminding ourselves to become more aware. We don't want to be ignorant of this particular revelation. Don't say there will be no resurrection. Don't think. Because some of us live as though there will be no resurrection. There are some people who say there will be no resurrection. And some Christians also think there will be no resurrection. Even though you don't say it with your mouth. Or you are just not aware that there's something called resurrection. If Christ, okay, but, okay, yeah, verse, next verse 13. For if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised either. Next one. And if Christ has not been raised, then all our preaching is useless. And your faith is useless. <laughs> But he says, and we apostles would all be lying about God. For we have said that God raised Christ from the grave. But that can't be true if there is no resurrection of the dead. And if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is useless. And you are still in guilty of your sins. You see, so his death is not complete until the resurrection is in place. And if Christ has not, and in verse 18 says, in, oh, guy, we, we are finished 17, we are on 18. In that case, all who have died believing in Christ are lost. And if our hope in Christ is only for this life, we are more to be pitied than anyone in the world. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. He is the first of a great harvest of all who have died. Yes, he's the first. In fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. In fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. Believers, I am saying to you, Christ has been raised from the dead. Shout with me, Christ has been raised from the dead. One more time, Christ has been raised from the dead. Say it like this. In fact, in fact, Christ has been raised from... Tell seven people, in fact. Hey! 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 Christ has been raised from the dead. He is 
is a lie. This is the uniqueness of our gospel. This is the uniqueness of our gospel. Christ has been raised from the dead. Check anybody who says he has formed a religion or a, a group or a fellowship or association that he wants people to follow. Or he has a set of teachings. All of them have a date of birth. D-O-B. All of them have a date of death. D-O-D. All of them, they have a date where people celebrate their birth and their death. <laughs> That's all. But my savior. I said, but my savior. As we are wearing white, we are telling you that in fact, in fact, in fact, in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. Beautiful. He has a day on which he rose again from the dead. Mention anybody's name. Nobody has such a claim. No, no, nobody's follower has any claim. None of the so-called world religious leaders makes any claim to the fact that they have come back. They died and came back. They all have graves. Their followers go and visit. But when you go to the grave where my savior was, an empty grave is there to prove that my savior lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone and now I know yes I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because God sent his son they called him Jesus he came to love heal and forgive he lived and died he lived and died to buy my pardon I can't hear you shouting it. An empty grave. An empty grave. My God. My Savior lives. Because He lives. I can face tomorrow. Because He lives. All fear is gone. And now I know, yes I know, he holds the future, and life because he lives. He's alive, he's alive, in fact, Christ is, has been raised from the dead. Verse 21. So you see, just as death came into the world through a man, now the resurrection from the dead has begun through another man. Just as everyone dies because we all belong to Adam, everyone who belongs to Christ will be given new life. It is not just because Christ has died, everybody has new life. You have to belong to him. You have to accept him. You have to believe in him. He came unto his own. His own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. You have to receive him. And you have to continue believing in him. Do you understand that? Verse 23. But there is an order to this resurrection. And it is like this. First, Christ was raised as the first of the harvest. 
then all who belong to Christ will be raised when he comes back. After that, the end will come. Then he will return, he will turn the kingdom over to God, the Father, having destroyed every ruler and authority and power. For Christ must reign until he humbles all his enemies beneath his feet. And the last enemy to be destroyed is death. For the scripture, scriptures say, God has put all things under his authority. Of course, when he says all things are under his authority, that does not include God himself, who gave Christ his authority. Then when all things are under his feet or his authority, the son will put himself under God's authority so that God who gave his son authority over all things will be utterly supreme over everything everywhere. Do you see the order? The Bible says Christ has first been raised from the dead. Then those who are in Christ, when he comes, will be raised from the dead. If you go to 1 Corinthians 4, 13 downwards, the Bible says that those, when Christ comes, those who are, uh, the, the dead in Christ shall rise first and they will be caught up with the Lord. Then those of us who are remaining and are alive, when Christ comes, will be caught up with them in the air. Yes, 1 Corinthians chapter, uh, test. Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 10. Is that not what I said? Uh-huh, but on the num- first Corinthians. Oh. Yeah. When we happen to believers who die, that you grieve not, but have hope. Then he continues to say, For since we believe that Christ died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back him from, uh, with him the believers who have died. We tell you this directly from the Lord. We who are still living when the Lord returns will not meet him ahead of those who have died. This is the order. He's giving you the order. Christ was raised first. Then those who have died in the Lord. For the Lord himself will come from heaven with the with shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God, the call of God. First, the believers who have died will rise from their graves. Yes. And then... Together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we'll ever be with him forever. This is the sequence. Beautiful. I have this hope that one day I will rise again. Yes, Me too, when they bury me. That's why when somebody dies in the Lord, we cry for the missing, but we are not hopeless like that. Otherwise, Paul will not have said that he, he doesn't, he's even betwixt two. He doesn't know which one to choose, whether to go or to stay. He said, if I go, it, if I stay, it's for your advantage. But I wish I was not here. Somebody is alive, but he's thinking of going. Not that he's suicidal, but it's like it's a better place. Uh, if you have lived in America before, you will not like Ogojo. <laughs> Nor will you like Oyibi with its traffic. Or the hospital system that is within our country. You, you won't like it. That's why people ship themselves when they are sick. Ministers of state and everything. They won't do the health system here well. Because now you can get money from the government to sponsor you. Now then I'm on yen 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 for mano yen 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 good healthcare system. Gauze or crabini ho syringe crages or koto. Now when you go to Kolebu, you have to buy virtually everything that will be used to everything that they, they will use for you. As if she yin ho. How can it be possible that national hospital she yin ho? Oh. There's a pharmacy shop opposite the hospital. Gloves to crawl, money by your huejuma, or cotoma or months, or money as your months at your huejuma. Moka Mosemaya and Kana, ye end this in ten year Casanana, eh? End this you cry by an end yet the same. Name people about twice, thrice, Nina, and yet the same. I then ask me, I me uh, MPP, NDC by the one can send me MPP. Yeah. MPP by the one me NDC. Well, no, sir, book it. Yeah. Great. Yeah. That's it for Bishop. That's it for 
But I grow keke niye diwa na. Man, fun is serious. <laughs> it's just a game. It's just a small play, just for happiness. <laughs> are you there still are you understanding the order of the resurrection what verse am I on verse 29 if the dead will not be raised what point is there in people being baptized for those who are dead because some people have that as their practice then if there was no resurrection why would they even do something like that well nipa no wa no asa and it's finished. So what, what is the point in them doing things for people who are dead? Hmm? Why, do, why do it unless the dead will someday rise again? Verse 30. Why should we ourselves risk our lives hour by hour? For I swear, dear brothers and sisters, that I face death daily. This is as certain, this is as certain as my pride in what Christ Jesus our Lord has done in you. And what value was there in fighting wild beasts, those people of Ephesus, if there will be no resurrection from the dead? Huh? What is the point? If there is no resurrection of the uh, resurrection, let's feast and drink, for tomorrow we die. You see, that's how some Christians are eating and drinking. Because they don't, they, it's not in their minds that one day when you die, you will come back to life and they will judge you for the things you have done in your body. You. The reality of judgment will make you hold back when you want to feel free. Right. But when you don't think of it, resurrection I will be you will live again when you die it's important that your life after death is longer than the one you have lived on earth it must it, you must remember that you see and then he says that if there's no resurrection then we should just forget about everything church here who here because you here say baba bet na wiem na ya boy e word that sweat so now for you na my head na Charlie, why are you blue time? So I need Eh? Oh, Papa. Eh? Young Kwai. Eh? Anna and Aji. Sister. Mom, young Kwai. Young Kwai Diagro. Because if there's no resurrection, why am I holding back from these fine, fine girls who are sitting here? Do you understand? Or do you understand the message? And now, maybe I'm Oh, that is what I'm or Mope. Monsum, we are some weeper. We are called Muka Crapo. Some weeper. It's like you have given your bishop scholarship cry even before he can think. And if you keep it to yourself, but to just say it in public is also some way. You are some weeper. Although you are saying it to help the preaching. What is the point? So Paul is saying that let us eat. That's why some Christians you eat and drink. Because you don't think that there is resurrection. You and the people who don't believe that there is resurrection is the same as you who, who know about it but you don't believe. It doesn't weigh on you that it's real. So you eat and drink. If you like you go. What? what? Let's feast and drink. Or One translation says let's eat and drink for tomorrow we die. It means let's do whatever we like. Yes. Because there's no, you don't have to constrain yourself. So there are Christians who don't constrain themselves because they don't believe that there will be resurrection. And they don't believe that one day you will stand and they will be judging you by your works. That's why it's important to know about the resurrection. It's one of the cardinal pillars on which our faith stands. The resurrection of the dead. If you hear the Apostles' Creed, they say, I believe, um, no, I believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of saints, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen.
Do you understand? That's what it means. It means we believe in the resurrection of the body. Based on that, we control ourselves. Yes. My time is even finished. Where is that? Where is that? So don't be fooled by those who say such things. Do you see? Don't be fooled by those who say, let us eat and drink. Shall they make we go blue tie? Shall they not hear of any joint where it comes on fresh one? Me a tire f- for this Agbe Mami, uh, this thing. Choba, we I make tired for don't mind your wife, Choba. We I know this type of uh, other rice. I know they I know they feel up. Bush canteen gome. Yes. <laughs> yeah. New place be no pie. Charlie, me I, I do look for some place go. I got some small money where I won't go blow time. So there are Christians. You don't think about tomorrow. You don't think about resurrection. You don't think that it has any bearing with us. See, don't follow such people. Don't be fooled by those who say such things. For bad company corrupts good morals. There are people who are into time blowing. Boys blowing, girls blowing, men blowing, and animals blowing. Yeah, there are people who are... A young man came to me. When he spoke, I became afraid. He wanted me to pray for him, but I couldn't put my hand on his head. Now, the way he spoke and the things he had done, I, I, I didn't want to lay hands on his head. I just spoke the word that be free. Because, hey, the things he has done, animals he has slept with. Eh? I said, no way. Just a oh, you small boy. Oh. And he was saying it. And I knew that demons were in him. When I looked at him, I said, no. Eesh. He said, oh, my mouth. I have to wash my mouth if I say any of the things he did. Hey. Different, different animals. Not even one. Oh. Different types. Creatures. Not in his dreams. In physical world. That he collected people's animals that, that they have. That he, 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 he lures into his house. And sleeps with them and dispatches them. Yes. I don't want to mention the different, but you know domestic animals, how they are. You can imagine any domestic animal you, have t- you can think about. Think, think it, he has done it. And I said, no. This person, my deliverance will be a spoken word. I cannot lay hands on him. So those of you who have, you have found Christ instead of being serious, you are following people who are into eating and drinking. They are not serious. Think carefully about what is right and stop sinning. Think carefully about what is right and stop sinning. Tell your neighbor as you are looking at the screen. Huh? Huh? You are saying as though you are advising. Command him. Don't advise him. Command him. It's different from advising. Say it like you are saying it to your stubborn boy. Say that you are quarreling with somebody. Mugasi edi agroho. Say it seriously to him. For to your shame, I say that some of you don't know God at all. Some of you don't know God at all. So someone may ask, how will the dead be raised? 
what kind of bodies will they have? What a foolish question. <laughs> Please, I'm reading. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying it. I'm reading the Bible. When you put a seed into the ground, it doesn't grow and into a plant unless it dies first. And what you put in the ground is not the plant that, you, that will grow, but only a bare seed of wheat or whatever you are planting. Then God gives it the new body he wants it to have. A different plant grows from each kind of seed. Do you understand? He's explaining. So that you understand what will happen when we talk about the resurrection. It's like planting a seed on the ground. It's not the seed that nobody has. You see the seed just following each other as they are growing. No, it becomes a different body. So you sow, you sow a, a little seed, a different type of thing, but it grows. A di- God gives it the type, whether it's corn body or yam body or tomatoes body or any kind of body that God gives it. But it goes as a seed, but it comes out in a different way. Okay, verse, next verse. Yeah, so the Bible says that similarly, there are different kinds of flesh. One kind of humans, another of animals, another for birds, and another for fish. There are also bodies in the heavens and bodies on the earth. The glory of the heavenly bodies is different from the glory of the earthly bodies. That's the beauty of an earthly body. See, when you say so, you are looking beautiful. When you go to heaven, that heavenly body has a beauty which is different from how you assess somebody's beauty on earth. Because the earthly body has a certain glory or beauty which is not the same. So uh, uh, in Rejoiner's vision in the final quest, a brother met a lady in the, in the vision and she was so beautiful. And he said, ah, he's, she's so beautiful but he doesn't feel last. And the lady told her that because over here, such feelings don't occur. Uh-huh. Because when you see a beautiful girl, there's no reaction on the other side. But on earth, no, you can be affected. <laughs> <laughs> I'm explaining something. What verse are we on? Verse 41. The sun has one kind of glory, while the moons and stars have another kind, another kind. And even the stars differ from each other in their glory. Glory just means beauty. It is the same way with the resurrection of the dead. Our earthly bodies are planted in the ground when we die. But they will be raised to life to live forever. Our bodies are buried in brokenness. But they will be raised in glory. They are buried in weakness. But they will be raised in strength. They are buried as natural human bodies. But they will be raised as spiritual bodies. For just as there are natural bodies, there are also spiritual bodies. And you see Jesus, when he resurrected, he could go through walls. Mary couldn't recognize. It's like, it was when he spoke and mentioned her name. They said, wow, Rabboni, it's like it's you. He, might, he probably lo- didn't look like the same way that he was on earth. She couldn't recognize him. The two disciples on the road to Emmaus, they couldn't recognize him because they, 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 they didn't see him. It was later that their eyes were open. They said, wow, Rabbi. Then he disappeared. So there's a spiritual body. That is what we are expecting. When you die, it's not finished. <laughs> when you die, it's not finished. You will rise again. Oh, you will rise again. Death is not the end. The, scripture tells, the scriptures tell us the first man, Adam, became a living person. But the last Adam, that is Christ, is a life-giving spirit. May you receive the life-giving spirit that Jesus brings. What comes first is the natural body, then the spiritual body comes later. Adam, the first man, was made from the dust of the earth, while Christ, the second man, came from heaven. Earthly people are like the earthly man. And heavenly people are like heavenly man. The heavenly man. Just as we are now like the earthly man, we will someday be like the heavenly man. 
someday you'll be like the heavenly man. What am I saying, dear brothers and sisters? Is that what I'm saying is that our physical bodies cannot inherit the kingdom of God. These dying bodies. You know already your body is dying. Those of you who thought you were handsome, now when you look in the mirror, your face is not looking the same. <laughs> One old man said, even children, when they see you old man, they become afraid. Even children are afraid of you. Because your face changes and wrinkles and looks hideous and hideous. Your smooth skin becomes wrinkled. That's why ladies use foundation concealers. Concealers conceal the potholes and pimples and other contours that are coming on your face. Yes. So you see an old lady, her face is smooth like plastic. It's like, hey! When you, 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 you hug sisters and you are not careful and you are wearing white, all your shirt will become brown. With pawns. Most faces of sisters are not as they are. We like it. Do it. We like it to see smooth. But I'm telling you that it's a sign of a dying body. Yes. Or oh, you don't get the message. Face is changing. Stomach is changing. Arms are changing. Thighs are changing. Everywhere is changing. Hair is finishing. Yes. One day my, my wife looked at me where the code. She looked at me on the screen. She said, Hey. Oh, it take back. It's like your hair is finishing. <laughs> she was laughing at me that hey, oh it take back. <laughs> Yes, that my hair is finishing. Well, I used to have plenty hair, bushy. Yes, now it's thinning out. I have hair more than most of my friends, but I can see that it's not the same. It's finishing, it's going. Hey, it's going. Yes, dying bodies. This type of body cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Something must happen to it for you to arrive in heaven and survive there. So let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. Let me tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will, we will all be transformed. So whether you die or you are alive, you'll be transformed. Yes. You'll be changed. Yes. He says, it will happen in a moment. In the blink of an eye. Blink. Blink. You see, when you blink, that's how it's like. By the time you open your, close your eyes and open, blink, you see that. Even blink is not closing and opening. Blink is just, it's just a click of your eye. Just like, when it clicks, no, it's like, you have changed. So you, you look next door, you see that, hey, ah, who is this? Hey. Then you say, oh, Angie. Oh, hey, help you, Angie. Wow. They say, hey, Bishop, you're also looking more glorious than the one before. More. Whatever was weak will become strong. Whatever was a dying body will receive an undying body. When the last trumpet is blown, which is what we read in First Thessalonians, the same account. He says, those who have died will be raised to live forever and we who are living will be also transformed. Next one, verse 54, 53. For our dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that will never die. Our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. Then when our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die, this scripture will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh death, where is your victory? Oh death, where is your sting? Yeah. King James says, oh grave. So if you are buried, you'll be shouting, oh grave, where is your victory? 
Sometimes when you bury somebody and cover it, it's as if the grave has worn. He silenced the person forever. But one day he will rise again and this thing that was covering him will be ashamed. Oh, shame. Hey, I've come back to life. Eh? Grave, where is your victory? And death, who puts me down? Where is your sting? For sin is the sting that results in death and the law gives sin its power. But thank God he gives us victory over sin, death, and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, you have victory over sin and death. You will not die. You will live forever. You will live forever and ever and ever. So the last verse says, so my dear brothers, so, so my dear brothers. You see, when we're in school, they used to say, and so what? And so, your father is the minister of education, and so what? Then you say, and so soak my Gary. <laughs> and so what? And so what? Your father. So, all that he has been saying about Jesus rose from the dead, he explains how resurrection would take place, our bodies would change, we'll have incorruptible bodies, and dying bodies, and sick bodies. And so what? And so what? And so, my dear brothers and sisters, be strong. Be unmovable. Okay? Be strong. The King James says, be steadfast. Or NESB says, be steadfast. That means stay on course. Don't shift from the course. Receive ability to stay on, the, on track. You are going to school junction, stay on course. It's, it's a left turn. If you turn right, you are going off. So even when you go off, receive ability to make a U-turn and come back this way. Because school junction is that way. So you are following Christ. Don't let anything shift you from the call. Be strong. Stay on course. Tell your neighbor, stay on course. Yeah. It's a term from the Navy developed in the Navy that the ability to stay on course because when you're on the sea you have to know where you are going because when you land, there's no road if you are in the air there's no like a street that you are driving on or riding on or flying on you have to know by compass and other instruments where the direction to Lagos direction to New York direction to uh, South Africa otherwise if you just take off you just want you fly when you because the runway, the takeoff is towards the Atlantic Ocean. So if you take off straight to the Atlantic Ocean, where are you going? You say you are going to America. If you go straight, where will you end up? When we take off, we are taking off towards the sea. And that direction is towards South Africa. Now, if you are going to America, you have to have another route. If you are going to Dubai, another route. But if you go straight and you keep going, then you realize that, hey, you are three hours from South Africa. I said, no. Where we are supposed to go to London? No. London is the opposite direction. London, you fly across the Atlantic, uh, the, the, the Sahara Desert to get to, uh, to London, not Atlantic. So if you are only C, 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 Ola Haji. You are lost. <laughs> and before you realize, you are going towards Kenya and towards India. Why jira? So then the ability to reverse, make a U10, a C10, a, a, an L10, an S10, a kind of 10 that helps you to continue on your path to your destiny. Do you see? It's what is meant by steadfast. steadfast. I wish you would never make any mistake. But if you make a mistake, have ability to stay on course still. Yes. And be unmovable. Don't let somebody's face move you. That's why our prophet by the grace of God has not been moved even though he has lost his first son. People were shocked at Good Friday that, ah, so did he know before he went to preach? Because when he was standing there, there we couldn't tell. He was still laughing. He was still binding demons. One man of God said that, ah, so did he know before he was before? He said he heard it, but 
He couldn't believe it when he turned on the screen. He saw him at the independence. He said, no, the, the thing is rumors. cannot be possible. Look at what the man is doing. It can't be true that he has such a problem. You have to be unmovable. So if somebody, your beloved disappoints you, what will you do? Are you going to stop going to serving God? Are you going to stop coming to church? You, you got, be unmovable. Yes. If your husband is angry with you, you won't come to church again. Oh, your husband is hungry, so angry with you, so you will know uh, what, what will you do? What you do? You must be in love with God and his church and his work so that nothing moves you. Things want to move you in life. Be unmovable. Then finally he says, always work enthusiastically for the Lord. Always do what? Enthusiast with joy, bounding like a schoolboy on his way to school from, from his way to the house from school, skipping, happy. I finished classes. I'm going home. Mommy's lunch is waiting for me. The schoolboy. I'm going to enjoy mommy's food. Oh, things would always. King James says, always abounding. The tree says, Yenyamia Jumani P. Yamia Jumani Yeni P. Munyan Yamia Jumani P. Do a lot, do it a lot. Mumen also, do it a lot. That's why if you are in a church where we encourage you to do God's work, be happy. Munyan Yamia Jumani P. Yes. For as much as you know, he says, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. Nothing you ever do for the Lord is ever useless. I think I even left my, my little booklet. I was bringing to show you a, a, a funeral brochure of a man who I've never seen what happened at his funeral before. Before that time or after that. Where a person's biography is read and his own brother decides that because they said the following assignments when he returned to Ghana he uh, embarked on these assignments he was given these consultancy assignments then they started listing them his brother said all these are not necessary I mean work that he worked he sweated and got money for he, on this earth his own brother says it's useless so you, you want to grow and you want to live to discover that the things you have used your life for are useless. The politics, even the business. No matter what you do, find a place, strength, your energy to serve God a lot. Do it enthusiastically with joy. Come for rehearsal, bounding, excited, jumping, running. Be joyful. God sees all those things. God recognizes all those things. God rewards all those things. Don't be tired of your work. Oh. Don't be tired of this God we are serving. Don't give up serving him. Because it's never we do for him is ever useless. Anybody you bring to church is never useless. That person may never give you offering for your birthday or even give you anything for anything. Do you see? But it is never useless. It's never in vain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any money you give to encourage... Yes, this one. This one. This booklet. It was... It was you see, his, 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 bi his biography was about eight pages. When they read about two of them, it's like, What? Am I going to read all these things here? They are not necessary. He swiped one, two, three, about four pages away and then he read a, a few paragraphs up to the end. On earth, your own brother says he's useless. But Paul is showing us that there's something we can do. It is never useless. Never. Preaching we preach at Basenta meetings is never useless. Every center meeting you attend is recorded to your honor and your, your blessing. Those of you who think God is cheating you and God is, is taking something from you so you don't want to serve him, be there. 
there are testimonies abounding for what God is doing in their life. If you are not serving God, you, you can't believe how your life will turn out. Some of you, your life of fornication is continuing because you are not active in the Lord. Saturday, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, center meeting. Christ tell her, at the time, a center meeting. Champions League can take you away from God. You are easily moved by Champions League. A Christian who can go to church because they are playing Champions League. Long ago, me, me, ye, ma, come, free, so, come. Ah, Ghana, the first time Ghana went to World Cup, the first match, I didn't watch it. Come, me, 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 I don't have any team that if they are playing and there's a wedding, I can't go for the wedding. Or there's a, there's a funeral, I can't go for the funeral. Or I have to visit somebody, I can't leave that soccer and go, oh, jai, 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 jai. Me to me, I check his scores just for happiness sake. But, me to me, I don't know Oh. TV no crown here, you answer. It's because of how we have followed the Lord that is like that. On so dear, TV I have a person here. But the Bible says always enthusiastically working for the Lord. For you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. Nothing is ever useless. It will never be useless too. The flower pots you put in front of God's house is never useless. One my years will fear your face. I bet decorate your life. Even if you don't get any reward here, don't, don't worry. Greater is the reward on the other side. You see, you are so concerned about rewarding here that it clouds your mind from what is coming in the afterlife. That's bigger and greater. Oh, me, 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 Sometimes me kona me ma jun so gufo mo basa me ma no boys boys see un ti min direct wa die me nko straight na engu bola ya yem fie kama 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 yi na o jun so gu nchan na ujina e chire chire no atene wa die na afrosro sa na e gugu form in front of you na wetie tie na akọ na nye kurasi ni ana ya but you are growing here, you are not any serious. Oh, John, sir, Ben Bo, no, na Peja, what day, not fatting him, not in gum, not in gum, not in gum, not in Don't bring it outside and him, him it on the floor. Him, him it in the bowl. Go near enough. We are all men, we all have it, and we all know how to use it. So men ko bonum na wie wo bonum u wie a wa wo so wo so so a wa we satisfy say asano na afi wa park it na afi we to an amount clap your hands for the lord for his merciful god bless you stand to your feet please resurrection 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 because of the resurrection be steadfast and movable always abounding in the work of the Lord knowing that nothing you do for the Lord is ever in vain nothing is ever in vain nothing cup of water you give to a prophet never lose your reward cup of water, glass it's even less than one sachet. Do you understand? Even that one is not, it, that can never go unrewarded. Have faith in God. When you are serving God, have faith in Him that He will reward you. Don't let anything move you. Some of you, you are Basenta leaders doing very well. Now, you are flagged in zeal. You've lowered in your commitment. Some of you, you, are, you, are, you should be center directors, but you are not doing anything in the church. Some of you, you are center members. 
Sometimes your, your main thing is to just go. Just go and be part. You may not be the preacher. You may not be the lead singer. But you are just, you add yourself to make it good. You are not the lead dancer or the lead singer of the dancers. But you are doing something for the Lord. God looks at all those things. He rewards us all for all we do for him. He will bless us for everything we do for him. One day when this body, this mortal has put on immortality and this corruptible has put on incorruption and this natural has put on the spiritual, then shall be brought to pass that, oh grave, where is your victory? Oh death, where is your sting? At that day, I will stand before my Savior. I will look into his face and I will say to him, oh God, I thank you that I made it. I thank you that I was able to serve you. I thank you for finding and locating me and using me for your service. Don't be tired, oh, don't be tired. Resurrection is coming, don't be tired. Don't be tired. Resurrection is coming, don't be tired. Don't be tired. We are going one day. This body will change. Don't be tired. One day, don't give up yet. Serve God. Serve Him with gladness. Serve Him with all your heart. Do something for the Lord. Those of you who are ashes, don't retire yet. You can still serve God as an usher. You can graduate into a basenta leader. You can veer off into singing. You can be part of the prayer. Something must happen. Some of us are, we must be powerful helpers at the children's church, the saved church, the young people's church, young adults' church, young people's church, kids' church, uh, uh, babies' church, looking after them for Jesus. I'm doing it just for you, Lord. Just for you. Some of us here must be missionaries going to other places. I sent some people, they went to Bible school. They are coming back. Yes. Serving the Lord. Let's give ourselves to this glorious mission unreservedly. Let's give our hearts to Jesus and serve him. He will help us. Clap your hands, celebrate the Lord. As every head is bowed, every eye closed, I want to pray for you. You are here. You don't know Jesus as your Savior. If you are to die today, you are not sure that you make it to heaven. As every head is bowed and every eye closed, I want to pray for you. Please. Jesus died for you. Jesus rose again to justify you. All you need to do is to open your heart to him and make him your Lord and your Savior. If you are here, you want me to pray for you. Please lift up your right hand in the air so I can pray for you. Your right hand in the air. God bless you. Lift it up. God bless you. Lift it up. God bless you. God bless you. Wonderful. If you have lifted your hand. Oh, your heart is beating where you are standing. It means God is talking to you. Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid. God bless you. If you have lifted your hand, come to me right in front here. Come running. Come running. Come running to the mercy. Lift your hands, those of you here. Lift your two hands. Say after me, Heavenly Father, I come to you today just as I am. Please forgive me for all my sins and wash me with your precious blood. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. From today, I belong to Jesus. I will follow Jesus for the rest of my days. Please write my name in the book of life. I'm yours forever. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. We believe the word of God has come to you and you have been blessed by this sermon. Subscribe to this channel and get notified about every video posted.